Hello and welcome, my name is Thomas and in this video we're gonna be talking about what you should charge for and what you should give away for free. Okay, so if you are currently running a business or if you want to, you might be a little bit put off by the idea of giving something away for free because after all, for a business, aren't we supposed to be charging people so that we can turn a profit so that we can continue to be a business? And the answer is yes. However, giving something away for free, if you're familiar with this channel, you probably well know, is a great way to continue to get more customers and clients for that thing for which you charge. So before we get, at, get to the actual part where we talk about distinguishing between the two, first let's talk a little bit about the concept of charging for something as well as giving something away for free. So charging for something, most of us pretty much have down. We kind of understand how that works, but giving something away for free is where a lot of people meet some challenges and some difficulty. So what you can do in order to start to produce more uh, clients and customers is to start creating something that is useful and relevant for the audience or to the clientele that you want to serve. So the great news in today's digital age is that you can actually start building a business from home doing something that you're maybe doing for a company or something that you're excited about and you want to find customers for something that you're genuinely good at or maybe you enjoy doing more. Like I said, maybe you work for a company doing, you know, at a nine to five desk job right now and you work maybe in accounting or something like that, but you want to start taking on your own clients. Well, once you start to go independent, one of the first things that you're going to discover like I did early on is that the tough part, the toughest part, I might argue, is that you need to figure out a way to get customers. And so what a lot of people will do is they'll go out there and they'll start running Facebook ads or maybe they'll run YouTube or Google ads or something else and they'll try to get their work in front of more people. But what a lot of people miss is that there's actually a free and in my opinion, a better way to actually start to gain clients and customers. And that's where we get to the point where we talk about giving something away for free. Okay, so there's three main different ways that I typically recommend giving something away for free, at least in terms of medium. And you've probably heard me talk about these before if you're a regular viewer, which is going to be either a blog, a podcast, video or a combination of the three. There are other things you can do. You can create maybe a free ebook, but what I'm going to be focusing on today is something that is relevant and regular. So something that is useful as well, but it's going to be regularly delivered, uh, ideally once a week. So this is going to be something that you would put out and it could also even be like an email newsletter. But the key is that it has to be genuinely useful. When I say free, a lot of people think that they're going to kind of take one of their products or take something that they do and they're just going to kind of water it down so that it reaches the level of free. Or they're just going to offer something that's incomplete or they're just going to do something quick and easy and not quite put in the same effort that they would as something that they would charge for. So the key is that you need to create something that wows people. So it should be genuinely useful. It should be possible. And I know this is tough, particularly for a lot of people who are just getting started in creating their own brand or business is that it needs to be something that provides so much value you could charge for it. So somebody could just watch one of your YouTube videos or listen to one of your podcasts or read one of your articles. And perhaps the vast majority of people will get value from those things that you're creating and never sign up for your product or for your service. But here's the thing, what a lot of people miss is that in the long run, that person could end up potentially turning into a client or a customer later. And even more importantly, by creating this useful, relevant, interesting information that you provide to the world on a weekly basis, you're actually going to gain something that is even more valuable, uh, particularly in today's online age, which is attention. You're going to have people's attention. People pay hundreds, if not thousands, and even TV networks pay millions of dollars to run ads specifically so that they can capture people's attention. The great news is that now with things like YouTube and podcasts and blogs, you can garner that same attention and perhaps even better by providing something that is real, useful, 
like I said, uh, and relevant for the people that you want to serve. So here's a quick example. I obviously do a weekly video or weekly-ish, sometimes two times a week, a video here on YouTube a while back. I created one called how to use your DSLR camera as a webcam. I made this video because after all of my searching on YouTube for how to do this, I couldn't find a good video that contained all the information. I found some articles that I kind of pieced together until I finally got the solution to work. Lo and behold, uh, six months later, maybe a little bit longer, the video has had about a quarter of a million views on YouTube. So for a very small channel, that's pretty substantial. The whole point behind it was to create something that I personally would have wanted, something that would have been genuinely valuable to me, put it out there, and as it turns out, it became very popular. And as a result, not only has it slowly helped grow the channel, but more importantly, it's also uh, started to actually produce more customers and clients as a part of my business. Now, here's the thing. I don't create free content specifically for the end goal of producing more clients and customers. That's a nice benefit if it happens, but it's a good practice, I would argue, as well, just to, off to, just to get into the habit and the practice of delivering value in the field that you work. It sharpens your skills, it keeps you on your toes, and it just genuinely helps people, which those of us who are in business, that's what we wanna do. So for those people we can help for free, great. For those people who wanna pay us, that's great too. So this whole concept of creating something for free and then something that you actually charge for can work in a pretty wide variety of industries. So for example, let's say that you're a real estate agent, right? And you're trying to get more, you're trying to get more clients. Well, one of the things that you could do as an example is create a YouTube channel where you go around and maybe you record some of the videos or you record some of the houses that you're showing. And then you go through as you're showcasing some of those houses and you provide your top 10 tips for what to look for as you're examining the next house that you're considering buying. Those types of people, obviously we know who are gonna be watching that type of video are going to be interested in a real estate agent since they're looking at information online about how to, about what to look for when they're buying a house or perhaps selling a house. Again, something that's useful, relevant, and timely for the people who would want to have it. Similarly, if you were an accountant, perhaps you want to start your own independent uh, firm or just start freelancing as an accountant. What you could do is you could create a podcast for weekly. You share your top five tips for what to look for as you're filing your taxes or whatever information you would want to provide what is the best accounting software, so on and so forth. Okay, so that gives some ideas in terms of free content. And yes, I highly advise, regardless of what industry you work in, I highly advise that you create some sort of free content for the reasons that I mentioned previously. But then we need to shift gears and talk about the things for which we actually charge because that's when we actually get to the part that actually is the business that produces the income that helps us to continue our business which in turn helps us to continue to help more people. So what is super important, and I see this mistake all the time, particularly I've been more prevalent in the design industry years past, so I've got to see this more amongst a lot of designers, but that is they will start to give their, uh, their paid services away for free. I've seen it so many different times. A company will go to a designer and say, hey, would you do some spec work for us? We're not gonna pay you anything for this logo design, this brand identity you're gonna create for us, but it's gonna be some great exposure. So here's the thing, it's never great exposure. You know what great exposure is? Like I said earlier, create a blog, create a YouTube channel, create a podcast, all free, all valuable, great exposure. Doing your paid work for free is almost never great exposure. In fact, not only is it not good exposure, it actually hurts and it diminishes the work that you do. So I'm not gonna go into it too much in this video. I've talked about it in previous videos. However, I always advocate doing a higher level of service that you can charge more for. It's good to charge more for your services than those who are in your industry, those who are maybe your competitors or those who kind of align with what you do. Charging more means that a, you'll make more, but also you're going to attract better clients, people who are willing to pay more for the type of service that you do. And the moment you go in there and you start discounting or offering for free that high quality 
product or service that you offer is the moment that it's going to start diminishing in value in the eyes of its customer. If they see you give it away for free willy-nilly, particularly so that you can get exposure or get new clients in the future, those new clients or potential new clients are going to see you doing that and then question, is it really worth as much as you say it is if you can just willy-nilly give it away for free? So the reverse also applies when we're talking about what you're giving away for free, so that free content. Most people, when they come across free content, their initial reaction, because there's so much mediocre content out there, is they're going to have pretty low expectations. But if you can win them and wow them with what you're charging or what's with what you're giving away for free, the natural reaction for a lot of people, so they get a ton of value out of that podcast episode, is they're going to think, you know what, there's this much value in what this person is offering for free. Who knows what I'm going to get if I actually pay this person? So again, it goes both ways and the reverse works when you are charging for something. You don't want to lower or discount or give away for free what it is that you normally charge for because again, the reverse uh, mindset will come into play. Again, if this is something that uh, you can just give away for free, then why am I paying you? Okay, so now let's actually get to the main question that I've raised as a result of this video, which is how do you distinguish between the two? So I've kind of alluded to this already, but the idea is that what it is that you're going to give away for free is genu generally going to just be content. Now, again, it needs to be super valuable and needs to be super relevant. And yes, it needs to be something that's created regularly, but it needs to be just in a format that somebody can consume. The two times when you're typically going to start to attach a price tag uh, to one of these things is if it's going to number one, require your time. So again, if you are an accountant, if you are a real estate agent, if you're a designer, whatever it is that you do, if they're going to be working one on one with you for coaching or whatever it's going to be, that's something that you're going to want to charge for. And number two, if it is something that is from beginning to end going to take people through a process that achieves an end goal or result. So, and this is going to be something that's obviously longer form than something like a single YouTube video. You can get a lot of value out of one YouTube video, but once you turn it into maybe a series, like I offer a video series that goes and walks people through beginning to end. And I think it's like 22 videos with checklists and a lot of information kind of packed in there. That is a course all enclosed that I charge for. So in the same way, online courses, membership sites, actual physical products or other products that you've created, obviously you're going to charge for those as well as your time. So again, to underscore and to recap, whatever it is that you determine that you're going to charge for. And again, you can draw that line wherever you want. I typically personally draw that line. I will give away free video series up to like three to five videos somewhere kind of in that range. But once I'm going to create a video series that's more intensive, that takes people through a deeper transformation uh, up to and beyond that maybe five video mark. And not to say the number of videos quantifies or shows the amount of value that it's worth, but I just kind of look at the end result that you can achieve or kind of the level people are at. There are some video series I've made which are more geared for people who are just starting out, which would assume that they don't necessarily aren't they aren't necessarily making an income from their business yet. Maybe they're just getting started, at which point that's something I'm probably going to offer on YouTube as opposed to something that's maybe higher level for people who are making an income, at which point it would make more sense to actually charge for that particular product or service. So again, there's a lot of different ways you can chop this up. You can categorize it. The point is that you want to be very clear and intentional about what you're giving away for free and what you're charging for. And once you determine what you're charging for, don't discount and don't give it away for free. Now, there are going to be some exceptions. Now, I myself have taken my paid services. So, for example, I design and build custom WordPress websites. Uh, and I have given that away for free in the past, but again, in rare exceptions. So if there's a particular nonprofit or charity uh, who I support, I have offered and given my design and development services 
to them because again, they, they're doing a type of work that I support, at which point it is more of a charity offering as opposed to just willy nilly giving it away for free. So again, it's, this is never something that I would actually just offer for free. And part of the reason for that as well is not only for the other customers who would pay you, but also for the people for whom you're doing the free work. So people tend to devalue things with which they don't invest. So if somebody is getting your free work, there's a high likelihood that they won't value it nearly as much. That's why even when I've worked with charities and people with whom I'm giving it away for free, I make it very clear to them my process as well as how much I would typically charge for this just so we can all be on the same playing field to understand that the value of what it is that's being created. And again, that's not necessarily to flaunt your pricing or who you are. It's just to ensure that they're as invested in the project as you are. So that's it. I hope you found this helpful. And as always, if you did hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hey, so I get asked all the time how I make my videos. So I decided to put together for you a free one hour training, which I'm calling the seven pillars of effective video. Again, this is totally free. So click the box in the top right hand corner of this video. You can also head on over to rightly.tv slash training. Again, this is totally free. Head on over to rightly.tv slash training.